And uh, one day when it was raining, I decided that I would uh, point my 10 gigahertz uh, horn antenna out of the back window of the house and see if I could hear the Manchester beacon. And to my great amazement, very, very weakly, I could hear the Manchester beacon. Hooray, I thought to myself, you know, I can actually hear things. And uh, I didn't think much more about it, but I thought, well, if I can hear the Manchester beacon, perhaps on an even more rainy day, when it's rainy to the south of me, perhaps I could hear the Wolverhampton beacon. Now, wouldn't that be exciting for me? So one day, on a, on a very rainy day, when it was raining further south, uh, I carried the, uh, my portable equipment out to the front bedroom of the house, pointed the horn out of the uh, front bedroom window, and started to tune up the band to listen for the, um, for the Wolverhampton Beacon, which is on uh, 1036880. But because the gear had been set on 1036100 from a previous uh, act, uh, uh, um, hilltop activation, I had to tune up the whole of the band. This was a rather slow process. And while I was tuning up the band, to my complete and utter amazement, was an enormously strong signal on 1036810. What on earth could it be? Of course, it was the Manchester Beacon being received on backscatter from the rain. And this wasn't just a weak signal, this was a crashingly huge, enormous, strong signal. So it started to occur to me that even in this really poor location, that there was going to be the opportunity of making contacts from home. And this was quite a revelation to me. So I started looking for likely sounding, or likely looking rain, uh, using the rain radar. And before long, uh, I found uh, on a Sunday afternoon there was some rain just to the south of me that I thought I'd be able to see over the top of these trees, albeit I had to angle my antenna up at an angle of 30 degrees. And I put a note on KST and I said, is there anybody in the Midlands who would like to do a test? And Russ G4PBP came back straight away and said, yes, I'll do a test with you. And I rushed upstairs and goodness me, if he was five and nine, an enormously strong <coughs> signal, no problem at all. And within seconds, KST was going ping, 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 and somebody else wanted to contact me, and it was G3UKV, and he was keen to get another contact. In fact, he gave him a new county, it turned out. So uh, he was delighted to work me. Well, this obviously opened up a new opportunity for me, because being a portable operator, I don't tend to go out a lot in the rain. I try and avoid the rain. So when it's raining, I'm normally stuck at home. So it gave me the opportunity, I thought, to try and make some contacts from home. And so I've been experimenting with rain scatter from home, and I've been quite successful. Uh, I've had contacts now up to 188 kilometres from home. Remember, I'm beaming at 30 degrees to get over these trees, and I've heard G4EAT at 254 kilometres. So what I wanted to do was explore really what rain scatter was all about and try to find out how people who haven't got great locations and haven't got super home stations can actually make use of this to, get, to gain contacts from their home. Rain scatter really does make the impossible rather easy. Uh, I have a regular contact, well I say regular, regular whenever it's raining. I have a regular contact with uh, Rob, M0DTS, and he lives near Middlesbrough. And uh, I can't hear Rob on two metres. Uh, if, I, if I turn on two, two metre sideband, I, can hear, I can't hear him at all, because the signal needs to pass right across the Pennines to get to him. It's a completely awful path. And yet, you only need the slightest hint of rain in this area for me to be able to contact Rob. And I contact him usually at 5 and 9 plus on 10 gigahertz. And I do that just by opening the patio doors at the back of the house. The wife thinks I'm completely bonkers. Whenever it rains, the doors get opened and I have a chat with, with Rob, M0DTS. It works really well. And we, we always laugh about it because it just seems so unlikely. So, let's find out a bit about rain scatter. And uh, the most commonly used sorts of uh, clouds formations that produce rain uh, and produce the very best types of rain scatter are cumulonimbus clouds. These are storm clouds, thunderstorm clouds. And the good thing about those from the rain scatter perspective is their enormous vertical extent. Because uh, when you're using rain scatter, 
uh, the higher the vertical extent uh, of the cloud, uh, uh, the more opportunity you have for getting greater range from these sorts of clouds. So with a cumulonimbus cloud, it's quite possible for there to be mixed ice in water that says up to 18,000 feet, in fact up to much higher than that with really big storm cells. And you actually need, uh, to, to reflect wow. your signal, you actually need uh, water, uh, not just ice, uh, at 10 gigahertz. At 10 gigahertz you find you get very little reflection from ice only, but you get very good um, um, reflections from water and ice. But of course, storm clouds are relatively rare. And so I, I, over the years, I've actually become more interested in front, or over the years, over the months, I've become more interested in frontal rain. And uh, these are radar returns <laughs> from typical frontal rain clouds. And uh, the, the colours here represent the radar reflectivity of these clouds. And these are very typical, these are summer, um, well, actually, I think they're in November. Uh, the, uh, these are uh, winter uh, rain clouds in the UK, probably down in the south of the UK, I would think. And the thing that you notice about them is that the radar reflectivity is fairly low, is fairly high uh, below the clouds where it's raining, and that there's a very pronounced bright band in the clouds of radar reflectivity. And it, it's at this area, this is at the freezing point. And this is called the bright band, and, and you get a, a return from this bright band area, uh, which is typically between 10 and 20 dBs stronger than from the lower rain from these clouds. So it's illuminating the bright band that you need to do. And that's quite important, because if you're using frontal rain when it's very, really quite close to you, quite often you're going to need to elevate your antenna, you're going to need to tilt it up to be able to hit the, the bright band uh, so that you can get the best performance. And uh, the, height of the uh, height of the bright band can e quite easily be worked out from the local temperature. The, what's called the lapse rate, which is the uh, 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 rate at which temperature decreases with height in the UK, is 1 degree centigrade per 100 metres. So if you have a day where it's 20 degrees centigrade at ground level, then at 2,000 metres you're likely to have this bright band effect. The bright band effect is frequency dependent. Uh, and as you go higher in frequency, the bright band effect tends to reduce. So at 24 gigahertz, uh, this bright band effect is uh, uh, pretty much negligible. Here we have um, uh, a, a diagram showing the, uh, the bright band effect on, uh, on a cumulonimbus cloud. And you can see that this, this uh, at the bright band, that there is this great increase in radar reflectivity uh, and that's really what you're going to be looking for when you're uh, when you're when you're bouncing your signals off the clouds or off, the, off these rain fronts so rain scatter uh can be scattered off in all directions and that's critically important that's critically important uh, for, uh, uh, for for using rain scatter and it gives it one of its key characteristics and that is that uh, normally on 10 gigahertz you know that if you call CQ you have to be calling CQ in exactly the right direction to make a contact but that's not the case with rain scatter because rain scatter scatters your signal in all directions and so it becomes much easier to call CQ. And very frequently, if there's rain to the south of me, I call CQ because there's always a chance that someone will hear me. And it, they don't need to point their antennas particularly accurately to make use of rain scatter. The thing that people are most often looking for is forward scatter. Uh, and as you'll see in a minute, there are some advantages to forward scatter. It tends to have less loss uh, and tends to have less distortion of the radio signal. It's on backscatter that I hear the uh, Manchester, the Rochdale beacon uh, beaming out of the back win uh, front window of my house. Uh, and it's incredibly useful to have a local beacon. And I, I really do make great use of this beacon because what it does is it illuminates all of the clouds with 10 gigahertz signals. 
And what that means is that with my antenna system, I can simply turn around and find where the best scatter point is really easily. 